Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do two examples of pulmonary function tests, and we're going to be able to figure out whether or not the given condition here is a restrictive pulmonary defect or an obstructive pulmonary defect. So we're going to look at two examples, and in each case we're going to be given all of these values here, which are obtained from some kind of spirometry. So we see here FVC, FEV1, the ratio of the two, residual volume, total lung capacity, the ratio of those two, and something called the DLCO. Let's briefly talk about what each of these values is, and then we'll talk about how to analyze this problem and solve it. The FVC, first of all, is the forced vital capacity. So the forced vital capacity is basically the amount of air that you can forcibly exhale after a maximal inspiration. So if you breathe in as much as you possibly can, then the machine is going to measure from that point how much you can actually exhale until you can't exhale anymore. That's the forced vital capacity. Now, uh, here it gives you for each of these an actual and a predicted. So predicted is theoretically what the person should have. Actual is what is measured in that person. And for forced vital capacity, this should be as close to 100% as possible. So you can automatically see that there's an issue here. The second thing is the FEV1, or forced expiratory volume, at one second. So if you, again, do a maximal inspiration, and then you do a maximal expiration, that expiration is going to take more than one second. And depending on how much air you can exhale, how fast you can exhale, it may take anywhere from two to four or five seconds. Well, this FEV1 is just the volume of air that's exhaled after one second. So at that point, you probably have not exhaled that entire volume of air, right? But this is just the amount that's exhaled after one second, which tends to be the majority of the air that you've previously inhaled. And again, this one should also be uh, close to 100%. Then we have here the ratio of these two, the FEV1 to FVC ratio. Now, normally, this ratio should be about 0.8 or 80%. You can see here that this person's predicted ratio is 84%. Okay, So it's 80, give or take a little bit. Uh, you can see here that their actual is elevated. Then we have RV, which is the residual volume. We have TLC, which is the total lung capacity. The ratio of these two, which we really won't use a whole lot of. And then down here is something called the DLCO. DLCO is really just the diffusion capacity of carbon monoxide. So we obviously don't want to inhale carbon monoxide. However, carbon monoxide diffuses from the alveolus across the capillary interface into the blood passively. Well, oxygen and carbon dioxide also diffuse passively. So basically, if the diffusion of carbon monoxide is high, then that probably means that the diffusion of oxygen and CO2 are therefore also high. And vice versa, if the diffusion of carbon monoxide is impaired, then likely oxygen and CO2 will also be impaired because they all diffuse passively, right? So we can actually use this value to determine if gas exchange across the capillary alveolar interface is good or not. And this DLCO value should also be about 0.8, or in this case, 80%. Okay? Obviously, this is very low. So now let's go in and analyze this problem and, and figure out if it's a restrictive pulmonary problem or it's obstructive. And pretty much always, regardless, the very first thing I would look at is the actual FEV1 to FVC ratio. Now you'll notice that most of these values have a percent predicted. The reason this one doesn't have a percent predicted is because it's already a percent. Okay, so we just look at the actual value for this one. And you can see that this ratio is 91%. Okay? Whenever you have a ratio that is elevated, it's likely a restrictive defect. As we'll see in a minute, when this value is actually low, so less than 0.7, that's going to be an obstructive defect. But if it's normal or elevated as it is here, greater than 0.8, that's going to be a restrictive defect. So we're already thinking restrictive defect. And we can confirm that by looking at the residual volume and the total lung capacity. What does it mean to be a restrictive defect? Well, it really restricts the size of the lungs. So the lungs are actually going to be smaller 
in somebody with a restrictive defect. And if we look at the percent predicted residual volume and total lung capacity, those are the two major uh, lung parameters that are affected by a restrictive defect. And you can see they're well less than 100%. These should be as close to 100% as possible, but they're drastically lowered. So this really confirms our hypothesis that it is restrictive, okay? Now, we can then look at the DLCO value really the percent predicted to determine whether or not uh, gas exchange is impaired or not. Now, in some restrictive defects, gas exchange is not impaired. That would be an example of an extrinsic res restrictive defect. So an extrinsic restrictive defect, that's something where there's not really a problem with the lungs themselves. It's really more of a problem maybe with the expansion of the chest wall. So maybe there's hypomobility in the chest wall, it's having trouble expanding when, when you breathe in, and that restricts the amount that the lungs can actually expand. Not a problem with the lungs themselves, so there's, no, there's gonna be no problems with gas exchange, it's just that there's something restricting the lungs from expanding that's outside of the lungs, like the chest wall. Or maybe you have excess adipose so obesity, things like that would be more extrinsic. But here we see that gas exchange is clearly impaired. I should probably put one of those red boxes here, that's important. This is well less than 80%. And so because it's decreased, we can say that it's an intrinsic restrictive disease. Okay, so if it's intrinsic, that means that gas exchange will be impaired. And that's something that goes for both restrictive and obstructive, okay? Uh, we can also look at the stratification, whether it's mild, moderate, severe, very severe. And what we do for that, as you can see here, since it's restrictive, we really look at the FVC or the percent FVC. Okay? So you can see here that if the percent FVC or percent predicted is between 60 and 80 percent, it's mild. 50 to 60, it's moderate. Less than 50 percent, it's severe. So let's look at that percent predicted uh, FVC we can see that it's 40%. So 40% is less than 50, so this is gonna be a severe case. So our full answer would really be a severe intrinsic restrictive defect. So now let's do a second example here. So again, we start off by looking at this FEV1, FVC ratio. And normally this ratio, uh, should be about 0.8. Remember in restrictive defects, it can be that value, normal or elevated. But if it's less than 0.7, uh, we can generally say it's an obstructive defect. So let's take a look at the actual FEV1 FVC ratio. It's 47%. That's well below 0.7. So we're already starting to think that it's obstructive. Again, we can take a look at this residual volume and total lung capacity to confirm that. Now remember, in a restrictive defect, uh, those values were decreased because a restrictive defect restricts the size of the lungs. However, in an obstructive defect, the problem is getting air out. And if you have problems getting air out chronically, there's gonna be more and more and more air in the lungs, so the lungs are actually gonna increase in size. So people with an obstructive defect, like just generally COPD, are gonna have larger lungs. They're gonna be more barrel chested. So obstructive issues getting air out. So we would expect the residual volume and total lung capacity to actually be elevated. And that's what we see here. Their percent predicted is well above 100%. So this really confirms that we have an obstructive case here. Now again, we can look at the stratification here and figure out is it mild, moderate, or whatnot, right? So this is obstructive, so we're gonna look over here on the left side of the screen, and we're gonna look really at that FEV1, FVC ratio. Now our ratio here is 47% or 0.47. Um, that's really between the 30 and 50% here. So this again is a severe case. So this is severe obstructive disease, okay? The other thing we can look at here is this DLCO value. Um, generally in COPD and emphysema, um, you're gonna expect this DLCO value to be reduced because gas exchange is impaired. And 62% is pretty far below 80%, so yes, it is impaired. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of these pulmonary function tests where we can differentiate restrictive from obstructive defects. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.